Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we've entered a new week and I'm convinced in my heart beyond any doubt at all that God has great plans for you this week. And because of that, He has given us His Word. And that includes you, praise God. So if you would open your heart to receive His Word today, I'll tell you one thing that's going to happen in your life. You will begin to make your way prosperous. Now, what does it mean, make your way prosperous? You will begin to go in the direction that will lead you to life. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, like we always do, I want us to make demand for our daily bread. Join me right now in faith as we declare, say, Father, I demand from you right now my daily bread. I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Believe that with your hearts. You know, Jesus instructed us to pray that prayer. He said, give us this day our daily bread. And not, not because Jesus was introducing something new. David already said, he daily loads us with benefits. Hallelujah. He daily loads us with benefit. Now, that's telling you about the logos of God. That's telling you about the character, the personality of God. What does God do to his children daily? He daily loads them with benefits. So Jesus coming under that reality, Jesus coming under that truth, told us how to access it. How do we access it? He said, make a request on a daily basis. Give us this day our daily bread. Praise God. Now, now so, so when he instructed us, he was only re reinforcing his instruction that he had given over 2,000 years ago. Praise God. Now that's what we're doing. We're not, we're not, you know, Paul says, I will not receive the grace of God in vain. So grace has been made available in this regard. God releases every day, whether you know it or not, your daily bread. It is left for you to come on that truth and begin to receive it and live by it. It. Now that's why we make that declaration and make that request on a daily basis. Praise God. Now then, we have been talking about light, darkness versus light. Because the Lord says we are in the season of shining. And that season of shining means shining His light that has been revealed or given to us. Praise God. So, now, so in Isaiah... He told us, he says, Behold, Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 2. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Now, I shared extensively with you on that last week. It says, the darkness, the darkness. And I told you, he was referring to the systems that Satan has created. Now, you remember Paul speaking in Ephesians. Therefore, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers then he said against the rulers of the darkness of this age the rulers of the darkness of this age making you understand that the darkness have beings that are behind it so we are not just talking about the the effect of the darkness see he called it the darkness shall cover the air. Now, these are systems that Satan has put in place. And so Paul says, we wrestle against the rulers of that darkness. And how do we wrestle against them? We don't fight the effect of the darkness. We call forth lights. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our job is to bring forth light. We, we are not there trying to fight the darkness. No. You see, that's the mistake many people have made. They are trying to fight the darkness. So they say, you need to go for deliverance. Deliverance from what? You, you, you see. Now, 
Be careful not to place yourself as a victim. Oh God, the enemy has overtaken me. Please, deliver me from his hands. I cannot help myself. Listen, brothers and sisters. If darkness has overtaken you, all you need to do is to shine the light. And I'll tell you this truth. The only thing that can hinder your light from shining is you. It's not God. Satan can never stop the word of God from coming to you. Satan can never stop God from rising over you. But he can deceive you to believe that all that is a lie. And by believing him, you will not rise when you are supposed to rise. And when you don't rise, you don't shine. I told you. It was when he came to Adam and Eve, met Eve, deceived her, got her to eat that fruit. And he was the same one that explained a different meaning of nakedness to them. He had no power to put any kind of nakedness on them. He only convinced them to believe him with his own explanation of nakedness. And because they believed him, they went to hide. See, you will always act according to your belief. So because they believed Satan, when he told them that they should be ashamed of themselves, they believed him. So when the voice of God came, they were ashamed of themselves. Now these were the same people who previously were naked and the Bible said they were not ashamed. So what happened? It is not because they ate the fruit. Hear me and hear me well. It is because they believed the devil. Not that they believed him and ate the fruit. Yes, after eating the fruit, you see, that was the key to them believing the devil. So the moment they began to believe him, now he began to tell them more things. Began to tell them more things. And that's the reason God drove them out of the garden. Not because he didn't have the power or willing, he wasn't willing to forgive them. But because everything he tells them now, they are going to kind of run it by Satan also. Okay, God will hear you. Satan, what will Satan say about this one now? See that now? Meanwhile, all they needed to do was to wait for the Lord to come and say, Lord, we have messed up. So now we don't even know where we are. Please, we are sorry. What would you have us do? You see, anything the Lord tells you to do, if you will obey him and do it, his light will shine on your way. And that's how it works. He gives you his word. If you believe his word, you see, you remember the man by the pool. And Jesus met him and said, do you want to be well? And the man began to complain and all Jesus said was, rise up, take up your bed and go home. He didn't touch him. Now that's how the power of light is. Jesus could have said, be healed, bring your leg, stretch your leg, held his leg, press it. God anointing oil, poured on his leg. Now he says, rise up, take your bed and go home. Now that's light. And that light will pierce any kind of darkness. Like John 1, 4 tells us, the darkness cannot comprehend it. Darkness couldn't comprehend it many from the beginning. Darkness still cannot comprehend light this day. So that's why I tell you, all you need is to get yourself in the place where the word of God will come to. In that word is life. And when you accept the life in that word by getting up and living the life, light will shine on your part. I was telling you last week Friday, I said, now, now I began to share with you concerning finances and why God gave certain instructions. Those instructions God gave concerning offerings, concerning first fruit, concerning tithing, those instructions are instructions that will keep you 
in the light. It will keep you in the light. Now, as long as you tithe according to the word of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. You know, God has placed his system right. I don't, you know, people suffer. He actually, God said it. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not because the power of the devil is too strong. Not even because they have committed a sin. No, he said, my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. They lack knowledge. They lack knowledge. If light will only come to you, and you keep walking in that light, there is nothing the enemy can do concerning your life. I learned this many years ago. And I'm telling you the truth from that day, the Lord taught me that. I said to myself, I will never be broke again in my life. And I mean no words when I tell you this. It has been so in my life. Difficult to get broke. I'm telling you, difficult. Even when I try to make myself broke, it's so difficult to get broke. <laughs> it's I'm telling you the truth. Needs are met supernaturally. Why? Because I learned from the Lord how to stay in the light many years ago. And I've been living that way ever since. So when I tell you these things, you are listening to one who's not just preaching what he has read, but who's preaching what he's living. See that now? I can never, ever play with tithe. Never. Never. Now, not because I'm afraid. You understand the kind of fear I'm talking about now? Not because I'm afraid that, oh, if I don't tithe, Satan will... You see, you see, listen. Because I understand perfectly the principles behind it. I mean perfectly by the grace of God. I'm bold to say that. You know why? Because the Lord taught me. He taught me. And that's why I tell people, have you asked the Lord? And I told you last week, Friday, I said, anyone who doesn't believe in Titan, or anyone, not, not, not just, if you, if you don't believe in Titan, I can say ignorance is your problem. But anyone who is preaching against Titan is truly have submitted himself to the spirit, or we'll say the doctrine of the Antichrist. Because, you see, Titan is the light that God gave to his children. And that light is supposed to shine in any darkness. So when somebody now comes and starts telling you, hey, Titan is not important. You know what he's doing? He's trying to take off the light that God has given. Now, what do you call that kind of a person? I'm not just giving you my words. I'm, it was the Lord that actually gave me that word. says, anyone who's preaching against Titan, he's yielded to the spirit of the Antichrist. But most of them don't even know. That's why we must be careful. You see, anytime you think something is wrong, don't rush to attack what is wrong. First, get the truth concerning that situation. And then begin to teach the truth. Don't just rise up and say, this thing is wrong. Find the truth. And begin to speak the truth. Because your job is not to cause darkness. Your job is to shine the light. So even if people are abusing the light, it still doesn't make, give you the right to cause darkness. You know, since they're abusing, let's take out the light so that everybody will, 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 will be affected. And that's wrong in itself. Look for the problem. Deal with the problem. How do you deal with the problem? By shining the light properly. And let people begin to see the purpose of the light. And when they see the purpose of the light, they will begin to focus on why the light is important. So I was sharing with you on, on Friday concerning Titan. And I said to you on Friday, Titan is what keeps the covenant alive. First fruit is your announcement that you have entered into your inheritance or you have begun to enter into your inheritance. So first fruit is an announcement that I have entered the land and I can testify that the land is good. Now here is my first fruit. 
And when you do that, I told you last week, I told you when you do that, the ground is going to recognize you. And the ground is going to yield of her full strength to you. The same ground is going to protect you. And then God gave instruction concerning tithing. You remember in Malachi when God said, Bring ye all the tithe into my storehouse so that there will be meat in my house. But he first of all made a statement. He said, Because they have not been tithing, he said, They are cursed with a curse. Now, God didn't say, I have cursed you. He didn't say that. You know, that's the problem people make. When they hear curse, they just, oh, uh, God has cursed. No, God didn't curse them. He didn't say he will curse them. He didn't say he has cursed them. But he said, you are cursed with a curse. And now we read from Cain, Cain's story in the book of Genesis. God told Cain, you are cursed from the earth. Meaning, because of Cain's action, the earth released a curse on him. So when God came up to say, you are cursed with a curse, you need to now understand what is that curse and who cursed them. And God said, because you have robbed me, there is a curse against you. It is the earth that brings that curse. Why? Because when you don't hide, the earth sees you as a stranger. The earth sees you as a thief, as a robber. That's how the earth looks at you. Why would the earth look at me like that? Because that's the instruction the Lord has given to the earth. That his children will always tithe. His children will always tithe. Now, you don't understand. When Moses told the children of Israel, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you the power to get wealth. Now, what's the saying? How do you remember the Lord your God? Moses was simply reminding them to tithe. Every time you are blessed, that's the time you remember the Lord. How do you remember? It's not just to sit down in one place and lift up holy hands and say, Oh, Father, I remember you today. No, sir. Every time you are blessed, the first thing you do is to honor the Lord. And how do you honor the Lord? With your tithe. That's the first thing you do. This is not a business transaction. This is honor. So you don't give it anyhow. It must be the first thing that you do. Once you receive your money, once you receive your profit, once you receive that. You know, ah, you know people are so funny. People come and say, eh, 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 even when they were tithing, they were tithing only of animals. And, 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 and come on now, come on. Do you deal with animals today? You know, Jesus said, you err, or he says, you have made the word of God of none effect by your tradition. So when you start, want to start bringing in, instead of you to align your mind with the teachings of the spirit, now you want to, be, you want to stick the, the, the teachings of the Bible in an age. And then you now want to come here and say, you know, that's the spirit of rascality. I'm telling you the truth. That's the spirit of rascality. He said they, they used to tithe. They used to tithe because they were. It was like an agrarian society. So that's why. Come on, come on, come on. Now, if the Lord taught them how to tithe, because that's the kind of society they have, does that make the word of God of none effect in the kind of society that we have today? Be reasonable. It was not about what they did for a living. It was about the honor that they accord to the Lord with what they did. The Proverbs tells us, honor the Lord with your substance. Truth be told, what is your substance today? Over then, their substance was, they, a rich man is known by how many cattle, how many heads of cattle and, and sheep and goats and all those things. That's how a rich man is known. But we know today, a rich man is known by how much money he has. Everything now is valued according to the money it, it, it can give. So when people begin to say things like that, you know, hey, you, you, I mean, don't try to justify your ignorance. Rather open your heart to God's word and let him teach you and, and be blessed. Our time is up for today, praise God. I'm going to continue tomorrow because you need to understand this. And I pray that the Lord will help you grace to his word give you courage to turn away from your wrong beliefs 
and accept his work and see the result in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.